Hello Horror Hounds. Now, did any of you guys know that there was a sequel to Roman Polanski's Rosemary's Baby? I had absolutely no idea and I found out last week while I was mucking around on the internet and it's available on YouTube and I'll put the link down below with the very strong warning that it's not very good at all. It was, it's a made for TV movie it was made eight years after Rosemary's Baby in 1976 uh, for a premiere on ABC. It was an ABC Friday night movie. Uh, it's got one returning actor from the Rosemary's Baby film, and it ain't Mia Farrow. It's it's Ruth Gordon returning to play uh, Minnie Castavet, you know, the cranky old lady who lives in the in the block, who turns out to be one of the members of the Satanic Coven, a role I believe she won an Oscar for. Let me tell you, my friends, no one <laughs> in this production is going to be winning any Oscars for what they bring to the table in a movie that is bizarrely called it sounds like a BuzzFeed, it sounds like a BuzzFeed clickbait type, the most clickbait movie title I've ever heard in my entire life. Number two, I guess, would be 10 Things I Hate About You. You wouldn't believe what number six is, but the clickbait title of uh, uh, Rosemary's Babies 2 is Look What Happened to Rosemary's Baby. And I'm going to tell you what happens. Okay, so there is one aspect of this film that I actually found really interesting. Do you remember, uh, I'm going to assume you know the deal with the Rosemary's Baby and, and what happened. So if you remember the reveal at the end and you find out that Rosemary's husband, Guy, is essentially a shitbag of the highest order and made a deal with this coven and, they, and essentially uh, sold out his wife's body to be raped by Satan in order to get himself uh, uh, an, an excellent Hollywood career. Uh, we do, Guy is in this uh, and it takes place over quite a number of years. And it, it, I'll be honest with you, it's quite satisfying to see him get everything that he was promised and for it to be absolutely the opposite of what he wanted. And a little bit like with uh, Don Vito Corleone, uh, when you make a deal with the devil, there is, there's small print, they've got their hooks in you, and that deal wasn't just a one and done. They come back and they want more from him, and, and also the life he has out in Hollywood, away from, away from his wife, because naturally, she wants absolutely fucking nothing to do with him, uh, is just soul destroying, and that aspect of it is good. That was nice to see. What's horrible to see is because the cat is let out of the bag in the first movie, it's the point of the story of the first movie. The whole point is the, is the reveal at the end of what's going on. The cover now really have nothing to do. They can't booga booga surprise you that, oh, oh we still worship Satan, by the way. So, <laughs> their role is really reduced to wearing uh, hooded robes and chanting uh, 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 and then reducing down to basically Ruth Gordon's role as, as Minnie and uh, Ray Milland, who is an actor I really like. I saw him recently on Columbo and he, he's one of the better Columbo villains. Uh, he plays Roman, uh, her husband. Essentially, they're left to provide all the uh, explanation of what's going on. Uh, sometimes, most of the time, in fact, just in voiceover, you'll see you'll see people driving along, and, you, and then you'll hear them in voiceover having a conversation. Well, what, what's going on now? Then? Well, let me explain it to you. This is what we're going to have to do now because this happened, and then this has to happen. Well, why don't we just get on with it? Okay, am I? And the, the, they're just in voiceover uh, providing exposition. There's no threat whatsoever from them. There's no menace. They just seem to be sort of like they've, they've got this kid and they seem to like bumble along and now they're just 
it seems they have to wait another 30 years until they can find out whether this child will actually fulfill the role for which the whole first movie was about getting it to be born. And the film is cut into three sections called books. And the first one's called The Book of Rosemary. And I don't mind telling you, I got awfully confused when during uh, the, the opening credits, uh, the text Book of Rosemary came up. And I thought maybe I'd missed something. And was it, was it based on a, this or, or that? Or was it an alternate name for the uh, film? But no, there are three sections. The first is the Book of Rosemary, the second the Book of Adrian, and the third the Book of Andrew. It's a little holdover from the very final scene of the first movie where uh, uh, Roman says that the child will be called Adrian and Rosemary insists that it will be called Andrew. And she says, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm its mother. I can insist on, on that much. Turns out that insistence didn't really stick. The coven continually refer to the child as Adrian and she continually refers to it as Andrew. Let's just, sod it, let's just spoil the hell out of this for you. I'm going to give you, I'm going to refer to my notes, but I, I, I sort of bullet pointed what happens throughout the film. We're going to run through it really quickly because it's, it's, it's kind of not worth our time, but I want to give you a flavour of, of what, <laughs> what I went through and maybe Maybe what I'm saving you from. So the Book of Rosemary. Uh, the kid's about eight years old now. has been living under the roof of the coven with, with Rosemary taking on the role she kind of accepts at the end of Rosemary's baby to be a mother to the child. So Rosemary kidnaps her son, Andrew, who they call Adrian, from the coven, tries to hide in a synagogue, but the coven use their pull on the boy and lots of sort of mumbo jumbo to try and get him to return. So she takes it and they drive further along and Rosemary makes contact with her estranged husband, Guy. Uh, the kid attacks another couple of kids, and Rosemary's lied to and led to believe that her son has killed these other two children, sort of confirming her worries that, uh, that Adrian stroke Andrew is actually evil. So she befriends a prostitute who says that I'll help you escape, uh, but the prostitute's been sort of Booga booga boogered by the coven over over a payphone, uh, and uh, she takes Rosemary and the child to a bus stop, where a, a driverless sort of ghost bus kidnaps Rosemary and uh, drives her off, while the prostitute is left to look after Adrian slash Andrew and raise him, pretending to be his aunt. The end of the book of Rosemary, the book of Adrian jumps on uh, to uh, Adri Adrian's about 30 years old now. Uh, it seems that his foster aunt is now running a casino somewhere in the desert that he's sort of not really allowed to leave and he dresses all in black and kind of runs a little bit wild and uh, he's got a best friend who dresses all in white, who tries to help him and keep him on the straight and narrow. And his friend's name is Peter Simon. Yes, if you know your Bible, Simon Peter, the rock upon which Jesus builds the church. It's this obvious, or dressing all in black and dressing all in white. Uh, so... Adrian's living a sort of cloistered life and is very frustrated. He also sings at the casino with his psychedelic rock band named Captain Nitro and his Acid Kings. He dresses all in black and his best friend dresses all in white. Uh, Adrian is, that we find in voiceover that Adrian is supposed to draw blood in anger uh, before his 30th birthday so that Satan can enter him when they perform some mumbo jumbo ceremony. Uh, uh, and then he has a fight with a biker gang that's an absolute mess. Uh, and then in preparation for his birthday, he's drugged and Minnie and Roman turn up and they paint his face white. And then they think that the ceremony hasn't worked because there's more good in him than evil. But then he hears his rock band playing and sort of moves zombie-like towards the stage and starts dancing on the stage, doing his best sort of Mick Jagger moves. And, and then Roman realises that, I shit you not, that Satan is moving through 
Adrian and corrupting the innocent crowd of teenagers uh, through the power of prog rock <laughs> and dance. Um, and uh, Peter Simon gets into a fight with, with Guy, uh, Rosemary's husband, and Guy kills him. And it's Peter Simon's uh, death that shakes Adrian out of his satanic reverie and puts him slap bang into a coma. The end of the book of Adrian. Um, the book of Andrew. Uh, so Adrian slash Andrew wakes up from his coma. Everyone's calling him Adrian, but now he insists on being called Andrew. Uh, and he's told he's in a mental hospital for the criminally insane and he's been charged with killing Peter, even though it was his dad who did it, his stepdad. Well, uh, a nurse named Ellen gives him some uh, 70s style electrode wires to the forehead treatment that brings back his memory and makes him realize that he didn't kill Peter. So he tells her, I didn't kill Peter, I need to get out of here. And as you would reasonably expect, a nurse in a mental institution agrees that she's gonna help him escape from the place. Um, the two of them hide in a seedy motel where they stay for the night. Uh, and his plan is to go and search for, for Guy, his dad, who's the real murderer. Ellen gives Andrew a drink, which is drugged. And she's a member of the coven. Dun, dun, dun. Then she rapes him so that she can have his devil baby or the de devil's grandchild uh, or whatever. Uh, during that ordeal, he has a vision of himself in a desert being attacked by her dressed up as a harpy, completely covered in black feathers and black wings with claws that rake him. Uh, then he wakes up the next day, uh, she leaves the motel, he chases her, his car tries to run him over and he gets out of the way and it hits her and runs her over instead. The police turn up uh, and he thinks that the car will be empty and is driving itself and then the police open the door and there's Guy in the car and he's been killed in the crash and then uh, Adrian, Andrew, Rosemary's baby, runs away from the cops and is last seen stumbling along the highway sort of tripped out, uh, and then uh, the film fades to a doctor's office where Roman and, and Minnie are and find out that their, their granddaughter, who is the, the nurse uh, from the mental hospital, uh, and her baby are going to be fine. The camera pans over and it's Ellen and she's still alive and she's having Satan's baby or Satan's son's baby. Uh, but that's even that is not the end because over the end credits there's a montage of pictures of a woman giving birth and then when the credits end there's a shot of a crying infant. The end! <laughs> Personally, I could have done with a hell of a lot more prog rock, experimental dancing, uh, harpy nightmare desert vision. So we're, we're told in the bloody, in, in the second part of the book of Adrian that he's having constant nightmares. Just go all out, go completely trippy. The, the story's absolute nonsense. So just make it exorcist to the heretic level nonsense. And then we could have some sort of cult curiosity to this. As it is, this is something for diehards only who just now that they know that there's a sequel to Rosemary's Baby, have to watch it to sake their curiosity. There is no other reason to watch this movie. But if you dare, the link's below.